welcome back. I want a basher, that's it. I just want to make a 144. Some of that I can rip around, not care if it gets wet, totally trash the electrics, everything. But I want to address a few things, few comments. I've had some people say that the tyres have been coming off uh, because of the shims and stuff being added. Um, we all know these WL toys, once you take the wheel nuts off, because they've been Loctited on, you do unfortunately need to Loctite them back. So what I'm going to do is, though, still, I'm going to address the wheel wobble, because the title of the video says, no wheel wobble, no shims. <clears throat> so as you can see here, I'll just do this this way. The wheel still wants to come in and out, as you can see. But on this one, it now doesn't. That's just a simple bearing change. So we're going to do a simple bearing change here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the drag link. We're going to do this one here. We'll be putting bearings in there plus a new screw. We'll be making sure that that's then an M3 screw, not the, the I think it's a 2.5 that's in it. And then also what I have got is I've got some new shocks, which they do come with different rebound rates and the different colors to suit the rates. So, you know, it mightn't be to your liking, but it's effective. So stick around guys and we'll get cracking with this one. Yeah, I've got to understand now, I've already done this wheel here. I've already added the bearing. And as you can see, there's no wheel wobble coming in and out like that. Whereas if I do this one, it's still there. So you'll notice the bearing just sticks above the hub now. So that's both of them done. As you can see there, there's no wobble now on that side. And you have got just a little bit of thread just about showing out there. So obviously you've got to Loctite that back on. When you're lock tightening them back on, if you tighten them even finger tight, it's going to lock up, right? So you've got to find that sweet spot. So I like to put them on, back it off just a little bit until I can feel that little bit of free roll just within the tire like that. And then I'll go to the other side, do exactly the same. They both feel pretty much the same and you minus the wheel wobble left or right just by changing your bearings right guys when it comes to the back hub yeah i know i've done inside and outside on the, on the front but when it comes to the rear hub you only do the inside bearing with the 2.5 mil you leave the outer bearing like as uh, as is. If you don't, it'll lock up and bind real bad. And in fact, if you put the two point five in there, you won't even get your pin in. So only do the inside bearing. When it comes to putting your bearing in as well, if you're having problems, I think I've showed you in a previous video. Line your bearing up as best you can. If you kind of push your finger in, get your little wheel wrench, and use the actual seven mil side. And it'll just seat it in for you nicely. And it sits around the outer brace of the bearing too. So I'll pop this back on and then I'll show you. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it for what I'm going to do for the bearings and shimming and what have you. Um, I'm going to move on to the drag link now. I don't know, I don't know where I picked these up, but uh, they actually blue spot and they come with some funky sizes, which is excellent. Um, I don't know if you can see that there, 4.5s, 4.8 mil, 5 mil. Um, yep, you're gonna need a clamp, maybe some pliers to obviously press fit your bearings in, depending if your holes go well. But I've already took this off. I've just uh, undone the two screws and I've slid my bar out. Right, I've got a clamp to the desk. Hopefully you guys can see this as I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to have to lean over it, just so obviously I'm keeping the drill nice and straight. I've got the 4.5mm drill bit in, 
and then I'm just going to work my way up in, in succession to the 4.8, the 5, the 5.5 and the 6. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm not going to let the drill put pressure on this. I'm going to actually hover the drill so it's, uh, it gives us very, very fine chippings. I don't want it to dig in because it'll just snap the end off because it's just aluminium. So hopefully this will work out for you guys. Hopefully you can see this. <laughs> As you guys can see there, nice clean round tool. Just took me time with it. Three by six by two point five bearing, and obviously. I want to put that as my top actually on the nice smooth side so I want to fit my bearing in the top and that I mean I'm going to have to push fit that one in um, yeah let's see that's a nice snug fit so I'll get that one pushed in or I'll leave that one out sorry I'll do the other side off camera and I'll get them pushed in and I'll show you once it's done Right, so I just got the other side done off camera. Um, I'll try and get this in focus so you can see a little bit better. Um, that's better. So you can see they're both sat in. They're not falling out at all. Nice tight fit because I stepped it out. Um, putting the car up now. I've got two M3 pan heads. Exactly the same length as the originals. But the reason why I'm going to use M3s for, uh, I don't know how good this will show. Um, but as you can see, if I put that original screw in, there's just going to be so much play in and around that. So if I change it out for an M3, the same size diameter as that, nice and tight. Which means you've got to drill this out. You just drill... Drill the two outer four holes there and there. This side I've already done. I've already done this side, and as you can see, there's plenty of plastic on there, or you know, for you to get a, a thread on. So I'm just going to drill this one out too, um, and then I'll show you what I do after that. It's only two seconds. So once I've drilled it out, I'll just start setting the screw in straight away because it's easier rather than having the ball go across and having to fumble around. So I'll just keep it nice and steady. Make sure you go in nice and straight. Obviously you try your best. And this will make it easier when you come to put the bar across because then the thread's already initiated in the plastic. Um, these are just little tricks that I learned from other um, RC channels. If you check out RCU next Tuesday, that has got to be one of the best channels for tips. Proper inspires me, them guys, Billy and Jay. So fun. I mean, the way Jay, uh, the way Billy just smashes stuff. I'm not saying that he's a crap driver. He's a good driver. I'm just saying he's a bit nuts. Um, and then Jay. Sort of wrenching God in my eyes, he's insane, he'll get anything done, but anyways that's another lot, um, as you can see there we are, so I've just done the two holes, I keep them to one side, so just grab them, uh, I've shown you this a few times now, that's that done, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to slide a 3 by 6 by 0 0.2 washer or shim just underneath that, and it raises it so it's just, oops, sorry, and it raises it so it's just nice and flush like that. Obviously, you can just slide this in. I forget which way it goes now. Oh, yeah, loops the other way. So, slide it in however you guys can. But yeah, like I was saying, um, 
because you've set the threads in already without this being in. I was struggling there, so I just got the screw and I could just set the threads in nicely. Um, steering trim was all the way out to the left there. As you can see, nothing's binding. And, uh, yeah, that's what it's in there. So the play that was there, it's just, it's moving the entire link. As you can see, if I add a little bit of left, a little bit of right, both wheels move in tandem with each other. Nothing's locked up. So I'm happy with that. As you can see, sorry about the noise, as you can see here, yeah, the bearings absolutely fine, no binding whatsoever. Well, there we have it. So next, it will be the springs. I think I'm just going to show you guys them. Um, rather than then fitting them on the car, or if you just want to see them on the car, I guess, I guess it'll be best if I've done that actually. But um, I'm quite happy with that so far. Like I say, it's just going to be a garden basher. These are just the, the standard springs that come on the 144 and the 124 in the absolutely short run. But I found these, um, if I remember, it's, yep, it's just here. So it's RC mode. I found them on eBay, but they've actually got their own website. The, packet, the package that it comes in, it doesn't come like this. I've actually taken it out. It comes in lovely, like two springs per sleeve. Um, and it obviously from there you'll be able to tell what rebound is what like which strength rebounds it is um, the green ones here yeah. so the only 30mm long same as the LC racing ones but obviously I don't know what brand these are you get two green they've got their race you get two of these kind of purpley blue but these are slightly shorter because these are meant to be the stiffer out of the lot of them. You get two reds, which are quite nice. And, oh, and I've dropped that one, but you do get two purples as well. Um, where's that spring gun? Yeah, the spring gun, Jenny. Anyways, they do fit on these absolutely spot on. Um, the inner diameter is exactly the same, you know, I can try and show you as like this if you want. Um, but it just works. What I'll do is actually, because I've already done it, there was another pair here. Um, they were like a lime green colour. Um, but I was busy working on the, the Raptor runner. And uh, you can just, just make them out there. Through there, lovely. I think that lime green goes lovely by the way with the purple. So you can get those on eBay uh, in their direct fit. Um, in fact, I'll whip two of these off and I'll get back to you. There we have it, guys. Some nice shocks on there, some nice new ones. I'll put the light on, see if that comes up any better. Yeah, it does a little bit. The red and the green is nice. I like that. I'm working at night anyways. The light's completely gone. But as you can see, that's way better than the shocks that we're on. And because they're on now, you have got, obviously, a little bit of adjustment. You can actually go back up. Um, I'd set these so the caps were just at the end of the threads. You can just see that when you, you turn your suspension around. Whereas there you have it. They're my, what I'd say, three top tips to get done to this car. New suspension, shut the sort of steering out from the link by doing that type of mod. Sort of steering out uh, the, the hub, sorry, with the either the bigger bearings or you've got the other shims, which, um, which I mean, they do work, but this, these are the ones here, anyways. So I found these two. These are... Um, Protec 
5 by 7 by 0 0.2 clutch bell shims. They come in point ones as well. I've got some point ones here. Uh, so if you stick with the original bearings, you could actually take the bearing out the hub, put one of those shims inside the hub, put the bearing over it, and then do things that way. If you're one of these ones where you kind of think that shimming from the outside somehow is taking your nuts off. Uh, but I don't think it is. There you have it, guys. If you stuck around, thanks a lot. Uh, if you're subscribers, also, it means a, it means a lot. I mean, like I say, I'm only doing this for fun. Yeah. If if you like what he's saying, then go and buy it. You know, by all means. Um, I don't get paid for any of this. This is all just me, off my own back. So. Yeah, I hope you're enjoying, guys. But thanks a lot, anyways. And I like seeing those subscribers numbers go up. It's impressive. I've got some. Uh, I've got some interesting things coming to the channel soon. I'm just working with obviously me thumb being the way it is, um, a little bit slower than usual. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, guys. Sorry for rambling as much, and I will catch you on the next one when this thing is getting bashed.